When I need a break from the daily grind, there's nothing better than a nature walk down by the lagoon. But then I thought back to my morning dose of fiber, and I started to think, there's not a bathroom around for miles. And if this stuff is a laxative, I might be in serious trouble. But then I remembered that fiber actually isn't a laxative, so I could relax and enjoy my time in the great outdoors. So I didn't want to let the fact that I took fiber this morning interrupt my nature walk, but it really did concern me because for a moment there, I was really worried that I was gonna have to run for it. But then I remembered that fiber is not a laxative. It doesn't matter that we think about it as a laxative. It doesn't even matter that some companies brand it as a laxative. Fiber isn't a laxative, which means that I can enjoy my nature walk I can go to work, I can do all the fun things and important things that I have to do every day without needing to worry about where the nearest bathroom is. Fiber actually acts as a normalizing agent for stool that's too hard and interestingly for stool that's too soft. The normal range for the amount of water content there is in stool has a very tight range. So very dry, hard stool, that constipated stool that's super hard to pass, that's about 72% water. But a really loose stool that just makes you wanna run for it, that's only 77% water, and that perfect middle ground is right at 75. So between 72, you're super constipated, 77 means you run into the bathroom and anything more than that, and we're talking about really watery diarrhea. Fiber acts like a sponge. It forms a gel-like matrix that absorbs water and brings it from the small intestine into the large intestine. What this means is that if your stool is too dry, you're bringing water into the colon with the fiber to hydrate that stool and make it easier to pass. But if your stool is too loose, if you're up in that 77% water, 80% water, if you're too loose, it's actually absorbing that extra water and it's making it more solid and giving you that nice form stool that is comfortable, easy to pass, and doesn't have you running for the nearest bathroom. So fiber actually doesn't work as a laxative, but it's great for many different applications. If you're using it for stool, then it's gonna solve the runny stool and the hard constipated stool. Fiber has so many health benefits above and beyond its effect on stool quality. You get up to a 20 to 25% reduction in LDL cholesterol. You can get up to a 60% reduction in post-meal blood sugars, two point reduction in your hemoglobin A1C, and up to a 30% reduction in your risk of getting diabetes not to mention the effect on cancer prevention, as well as an amazing 50% reduction in all-cause mortality. Now, that's incredible right there. This supplement actually helps you live longer. A 50% reduction in your mortality rate means you're living longer than the guy that didn't take the fiber. Now, this doesn't mean you're bulletproof or you can stop vehicles or you can jump over tall buildings, but it does mean that if you're looking to avoid taking medications, particularly for cholesterol or diabetes, and you wanna live a long time free of disease, adding fiber to your routine may be that silver bullet you're looking for. So what's the right dose of fiber? One tablespoon of most fiber supplements has about seven grams of fiber. And you're looking at a minimum of one tablespoon, which is seven grams, twice a day. Most people get about 12 to 15 grams of fiber per day, but what we're really shooting for is 35, 40 grams of fiber a day or more, and the amount that you get from food definitely counts, but studies show that supplements have the same impact on these important measures of health and longevity as does fiber from whole foods. So if you're not getting there with your whole foods, that one tablespoon once a day, twice a day, three times a day can make the difference in healthy aging and longevity. Now, if you haven't been using fiber as a supplement, you're gonna wanna get started slow and then steadily increase. You see, as you add that fiber, it's gonna be carrying a lot of that water into the colon. And if your body hasn't adapted to that, you may end up with some of that abdominal cramping or distension or that abdominal discomfort that we don't want. And that may turn you off right away. 
So what we wanna do is, you got two strategies that'll work. One is, Clear yourself out first. Get a proper laxative like a magnesium citrate, like a lactulose, and use that to flush the system. Start with a clean digestive tract when you start adding that fiber. Now the other trick that you can employ is to start with a low dose and work your way up. Your colon has been getting by on, you know, 12 grams, 16 grams, maybe if you're a high fiber person, maybe even 20 or 25 grams. But as we start to add that fiber to the diet, you're gonna to wanna to go slow and let your colon kind of get used to that better flow, get used to the extra water content that you're delivering. And that way you avoid some of that cramping and distension that we see when that fiber is starting to hit the stool that's already in the colon. So we will start with half a tablespoon maybe once a day. Then after a few days, increase to a full tablespoon, then two tablespoons and take a week or two to get up to the levels of fiber that your body needs so that you're hitting 35, 40 grams of fiber total from diet and from supplementation. The next question you're gonna be asking yourself is what type of fiber should I be getting? And when you walk through the drugstore, the grocery store, you're gonna be presented with a dizzying array of options. And it's important to remember that all of the health benefits from fiber come from its ability to form that gel-like matrix and carry water and the fiber into the colon. That gel-like matrix is what lowers the cholesterol, what's what lowers your blood sugars, what gives you the improvement in the risk of diabetes and that mortality benefit, the cancer reduction, all of that depends on the gel-forming ability of the fiber. And what's interesting is when you line up all of the fibers side by side, there's only one type of fiber that checks all the boxes when it comes to all of these fine qualities, and that is psyllium fiber. There are dozens of different fiber supplements out there, but head-to-head -head comparison, nothing has the health benefits of psyllium. In fact, the leading journal, Nature Today, published an analysis of every single type of fiber and categorized it every which way and looked at all of the data on the health benefits that I've mentioned, and the only fiber that checked all those boxes was psyllium. So the easy button, to living a long time free of disease and avoiding a lot of those diseases that we associate with unhealthy aging is to find a good psyllium fiber supplement and start low, one tablespoon, maybe even less, once a day, and then slowly increase to the point where you're getting at least two tablespoons, which is equivalent to 14 grams of fiber daily, and maybe even increase from there. Take your time. Add the fiber slowly and wait until you see those health benefits start to mount up. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna go back to my nature walk and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.